Okay, welcome to Thursday of week nine. We're doing the math C readiness check and um, copy the fiend bread. So 12 times eight is 96. So there's 96 ounces from his smaller cups of coffee. What do I do with the 13 12 ounce cups? Don't be new. You know the answer. Just say it. What? 156 ounces total. Uh, how did you get that? Calculator. Oh, but what math operation did you use? 13 times 12. Yeah, so just like we did 12 times 8 is 12 copies of 8. 13 times 12. So 13 12s. How much is 13 12s? We don't have to memorize that. We have a calculator. And 156. That's right. I've been bossing you guys around. My computer does it work. Okay, so now we have two different answers. One, he drank the 96 in small cups of coffee and the 156 in the bigger cups of coffee. So what's my last step with this problem? Add them together. <sighs> So 96 plus the 156, what would that be? 96 plus 156, 252. 52. Okay, part B says there's 128 ounces in one gallon. So one gallon would be 128 ounces. Two gallons would be twice that. So it is a 128 times two, 256. And then three gallons would be three times that. So 384. So which one is closest to how much he drank? Whoops, and I put gallon. Two gallons. Two gallons. Very good. Yeah, so 252 is pretty close to the 256. So he drank just a little bit less than two gallons of coffee last week. <laughs> He's there having an upset tummy. Yes, hopefully this isn't any of us. <laughs> Thank you. Questions about this problem? No. Nope. Uh, this is a good example of the kind of problem the GED likes. They're not just going to say, what's 12 times 8? That's boring. That's the calculator's job. They're going to ask a word problem that's just a little bit complicated. In this case, because you have two things that you want to squish together at the end. And then they're going to do some follow-up thing to try and get you to think a little more. In this case, mm -hmm. what number is the 252 closest to? But they give you the wrong things to compare. You don't compare it with 1, 2, and 3. You compare it to 1.8, 256, and 384. So you have to do that conversion first. Questions about this one? No. No. Okay, here's another example of a very similar one. This is about money instead of coffee, but it's the same kind of thing. They're not just going to say add and subtract numbers because that's the calculator's problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to make it a little more interesting on the GED. So she made three deposits in green, 197, 203, 150, and she made two withdrawals in purple, 72 and 128. So, A, how much did she deposit total? B, how much did she withdraw total? And then, whoops, that should be a C, but there's a typo. If her monthly balance started at 2,305, 
then how much was her balance at the end of the month after she put in those deposits and took out those withdrawals? Where would we start on this one? At end of the deposit. Tell me again. Adding the deposits. Adding the deposits. Yeah, so they're all kind of color coded. I think I'll stick with that to be clear. It's 515. 515, okay. 15. 15. Mm-hmm. That makes more sense because just when I'm looking at the ends of it, Zero and three and seven is going to end up as a zero. So that fixes it. Okay. So that's all we need for part A. That should be a good answer. And then now I'll subscribe the um, 12 drafts for 550. And that's uh, Minus 200. So the 72 and the 128, she took a total of 200 out. It's not asking you to say that this is a subtracted or a negative amount yet. That's coming yeah. up in just a moment. Because now we're going to say that she had 2,305 and then tell me how to finish. Tell me, Jody, what number is do I have? What should you add? Right here. I had it. I had the, the computer on, but because Betty was going, I turned off my computer. That's okay. And I still have the screen to tell me what to do. Which of the green or red numbers do I add to her monthly balance? The, I would say that 500. 50. Yeah, you add how much she deposits. Someone yeah. paid her or she got birthday money or something. You don't know where she gets the money. Or she won the lottery. And then she has to pay the 200. And how much is that at the end? Again, you... 2655. 2.655. 2.655 or 2,000. Oh, okay. But oh, that's a terrible dollar sign. I think a lot better than that. <laughs> a dollar sign looks like a dollar sign that a little key would buy. So she made like those three hundred seventy. Oh, there. Okay. I guess it's this one's not what's so, the same philosophy. Else the GED isn't going to just ask you to do some addition or subtraction. That's boring. That are going to give you a word problem that has some addition and subtraction, and we mix it up a little one. Okay. So now we're doing measurement conversions. We had examples and other to doodles where we ripped apart rulers into little pieces or we glued the pieces back together to make rulers. Mm -hmm. So this one is a picture of a folding yard, right? Three feet makes a yard. And you can see that 12 and 12 makes 24 and another 12 makes 36 because 12 times three is 36. So 36 inches in a yard. And then we have this picture. This was the one about parts of a gallon. You have four quarts in a gallon, or you would have eight pints or 16 cups because of that picture. Okay, let's take turns. Who wants to do A? Change four feet into inches. Me? Okay. Is it a times 12 or a divided by 12? It's 
um, multiply four um, times 12. Yeah. Was 48. So the rule was if we're taking a big thing like a ruler and breaking it into smaller things, oops, like little inch pieces, breaking things apart is multiplying. We wind up with more pieces on the table than we did before. Okay, change 1.5 yards into inches. Are we going to multiply or divide for yards to inches? Are we breaking things apart again or are we sticking pieces together? Oh, and both one. Yeah. This was the picture I just made over here. There's 36 inches in a yard. Mm -hmm. So you need like those six inches. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. You need like this. So I have the 1.5 for yards, and I'll multiply by 36. What do I do when I have 36 times 1.5? It's 54. 54. Okay. We can see that on the yardstick. So one yard would get us all the way to 36. And then we have 0. 0.5. You have another half a yard. So that would get us this far, right? Yeah. Half of the whole Z. So 36. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. Whoops, I forgot one down in there. So it's 54 if I could count them correctly. Okay, cool. So that's where we get the 54 from. Okay, change 16 quarts into gallons. So I'll start with my 16. Quarts to gallons, there's one, two, three, four quarts in a gallon. It's like a quarter. That's why it's called a quart. Oops. Are we going to multiply by four or divide by four? To take something and I don't know. I would divide it. I would divide it in terms of thinking to four, four gallons, before, before gallons. Yeah. So before we were breaking things apart. We were taking a, a ruler or a yardstick and making little pieces. But now it's the other way. We had separate quarts. Imagine like a row of quart bottles on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And now we're combining them, pouring them into gallon buckets or mm -hmm. gallon jugs. Mm -hmm. So combining makes division happen. Yeah. Okay, change five pints into quarts. So a pint is half of a quart. So are we going to multiply by two or divide by two? Divide it. Again, we're taking smaller pieces and pouring them together to the bigger thing, just like the previous problem. So smaller mm -hmm. container to bigger container. I thought, I thought Betty had that. Betty said it was divided. Is that what you said, Betty? Yes. Yes, OK. With the allergies, my ears are not hearing the Zoom quite as well. I'm sorry. OK, everyone OK with these? Yep. So maybe the pictures help, maybe not. Uh, this is a good one to do more textbook practice on if you need it. So you can go to the measurement and go to the fancy textbook and they have nice pictures in there. Okay, this one we did already showing halves or three eighths or things like that. And we talked about how to read fraction diagrams. 
And this was an advanced one. This was Matt C stuff, but we could do it a little bit, but multiply the top and bottom by the same number to find some equivalent fractions. Okay, so here's another place we ended up after skipping around on Tuesday. So here is a bar graph. How many items were sold? It looks like the most that was sold for anything was 14. And how many things were sold at the school supply booth, right? One, two, three, four, five, six things were being sold. So first it says use the text boxes to label the bars with the six numbers. So how many things were sold for binders? That was the one that was 14. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. Yes, because I'm because of my allergies. Oh, I'm sorry. So sometimes putting numbers on the bars will just make it a little quicker to do oh. the other things. What numbers go on the other bars? And I'll write them in. <laughs> 12 on the notebooks. 12 on the notebooks. Homer and crayons sell the same. Yes, those are both seven. Clipboard is only one. Oh, oh highlighter. And highlighter is going down. Nine. 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 So that's this one. We just labeled things. What was the top selling item? Binder. And what is the uh, binders? Binders. Binder. Yeah, it's far. It's the biggest. Uh, Fourteen. Which one sold the same amount? Old that. Paper. That would be the uh, notebook. And the notebook was the old. Oh, and crying. Old yeah. friends. These two were the same. See that? Yeah. Old. So older and crayon. How many more notebooks were sold than folders? So here's the notebooks. 12. 12. Um, and here's the folders. So how many more notebooks? Five. Uh, five. Yeah, 12 minus seven is one. Windows are falling now. I know, I closed them and, and they're going back up. Yeah. Still a few minutes here. Okay. If you can hear me over the window noise, now we're going to find the sum divided how many, which is called the mean, what we usually mean by average. So we'll add them all up. One plus seven plus another seven plus nine, plus 12, plus 14. And then we'll divide by how many? So how many were there? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's too, it's too humid in here. It's too warm in here. So one, seven, seven, nine, 12, 14. One, seven, seven, nine, 12, 14. So that's 50. And then I want 50 divided by 6. So it's about 8.3. So the average thing had about a little more than 8 sold of them. Some things had more, some had less, but this looks like it's kind of in the middle of how big the bars are. Good. And actually a little more than eight. Then the median is the other kind of thing. Let's pick the center of the list. So I'll list out all the numbers and then work my way to the middle. 
So one, two, three, one, two, oh, two, eight. one, two, one, two. And if there's things that are both kind of equally middle, then we add those and divide by two. We take the normal average, the mean of those two. So seven plus nine divided by two, that would be 16 divided by two, so that's eight. Questions on that one? This is a different kind of word problem. Instead of saying, I'm going to have one thing, one situation that has quite a few steps. Does this guy drink closer to one or two or three gallons of coffee a week? This problem says, I'm just going to use one picture, one chart, and ask you a whole bunch of unrelated questions about it. We're not really going anywhere. It's just the GED being annoying and quizzing you. But that happens too. So, okay, let's see what you remember about fractions. Which of the fractions, and you can do this, I don't have to, or box me around if your computer is not working. So <laughs> grab a fraction and move it if you need to. Which of these is the same as two sixths? So looking at the number line, here is two sixths, and the one that was the same as two sixths is one third. If you didn't have the number line, you could say that I started with two sixths and then divided top and bottom by the same thing. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. But that's math C kind of stuff. For math B, for our class, we would give you the number line and let you open it. Okay, which of these is closest to five eighths? Is it not grabbing for you? Not grabbing. Okay, so he thinks it's one half. We don't have a number line for that, but let's go back over here and grab some of these shapes. So if I was to shade five eighths of this circle, so one, two, three, four, five, that's not any of these fractions. But which one is its closest to? It's more than a half here's a half, right? It's more than that by a little bit, but it's not that much more. So it's closer to one half than the whole circle. And it's certainly closer to a half than any of these small guys. So yeah, one half is kind of all we're left with. So not the most satisfying answer, but there we go. Okay, which fraction of these up top is closest to 0.24? Let's shade that on this 100s grid. So if the whole grid is one, how did we shade two tenths? Oops, turn on that. Oh, and there's another typo here too. <laughs> okay. um, so how do we shade two tenths 
and four hundredths. That is saying do that. Okay, so here's one tenth. The tenth. Here's two tenths. And four. And then four hundredths. One, two, three, four. So which fraction is closest to that? Have we shaded almost all the grid for one? Have we shaded a quarter of the grid or a sixth or an eighth? One fourth. One fourth. If I did that four more times, then that's pretty much all the grid. It's not going to fill it exactly. I said, here's another two and four, one, two, three, four. Then here's another two and four, one, two, three, four. Here's another two and four. So I'm missing these ones. I'm at 0.96, uh, all 100, but that's pretty close. It, Four copies of this is almost the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's about one quarter. Okay, and lastly, on the side here, there's this arrow chart. How do we go from percent into fractions? Which fraction is 12.5%? We're going from percent into fractions. To the left. So we could go left out of percent. So left, left. So 0.125. So that's as a decimal. Now we're out of percent format. So now I'm here. Now I want to go again to find the fraction format. So I, whoops. Demel, what kind of word is demel? <laughs> so now I will say its formal name. 125 tenths, hundred thousandths. So 125 thousandths. So that is a fraction that's the same as 12.5% but I'm not quite sure which of these it is. My calculator can help me. Let's try going the other direction. If I do 125 divided by 1,000, then I have a back and forth button here, and it says it's an eighth. So that one is here. In Math C, you will learn by hand how to reduce fractions better, how to divide top and bottom to get to this one. But we're not quite there yet. So it's OK to, for now, use the calculator and say, make it a fraction. And if you have a physical calculator you're holding, like you will in the GED test, it will have this button also. You will learn about that. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about this? No. This one is, for many students, annoying and or tricky because not all the answers are exactly the same. We're saying what's closest to something. And closest can be very difficult compared to just put it in the calculator and get the answer. Okay, it is seven. Do you want to take a little brain break? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, and that one has a thing. Okay. That's okay. up to Betty and Gavin. I say sure. Thumbs up. I will pause the report. We should note that if I add this up, it's less than 100. So it's all going to fit on 100 grid. How do you do this one? Where I just do with an iron but I would use the mouse. It's gonna be much easier than your oh, trying. I just trying to try and do it right now. That's why. Um you're not doing anything at all. 
Color's not change. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here's color. There you go. There it is. Trying to color. Stay in the line, Sonny. I'm trying. The mouse is a little difficult. I'm doing the 60. Oh, okay. Someone else can start on the right hand side and do the six. And I'm trying to stay in within within my range. <laughs> you two are gonna have to do it tonight. My computer is not working, so I'm gonna just sit here and watch Sean draw and boss him and David around. Don't get bite, don't get bit, you're in off. Of What color are you doing? Blue. He's doing blue, Betty. Okay. Do I have to do a color too? Why don't you do red? You get the hard one. What is the point <laughs> six? <laughs> okay. Not even a whole percent. Just part of a percent. Point six. Percent. John's got blue and Gavin's got green. So you get my favorite color, Betty. You get red. All right. Here we go. Done. Okay. There's sixty percent. Let me, uh, let me get out of here. Mm -hmm. There we go. So Betty is shading six out of a hundred, but that is not 0.6%, that's six percent. So I'm gonna actually <laughs> highlight all well, then why is there a little dot over here? Who is that? Highlight all of her stuff and make it green. So that's the green, that's the six percent. Oh, okay. So okay. six would be not a whole percent. Right, here's a whole percent, but 0.6 of that. So 0.5 of that would be a half. So here's 0.5. Oh, okay. So 0.6 is going to be a little more than a half, not the whole percent, but a little more than a half. So that's what I should do in red. Ta da! Makes sense? Ta da! It's like half a cup of sugar in your recipe. It's not all that. <laughs> it's just excellent. Okay. Bring me to you. Do you remember the shortcuts for restaurant tipping? We can just use a calculator and do this really oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. But the shortcuts are the yeah. interesting. 10% of a $24 mill and 20% of a $30 mill? Yeah. Shortcuts? I would it's like a fraction of it's like a fraction is like um ten percent out of two twenty four dollar meal. I think like two dollars and forty cents. Yeah, how did you get that? Well, it's 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 like ten percent. <laughs> you like you go you go and divide it. You divide it. This is a fraction of it. And twenty percent out of a thirty dollar meal, honey. You have you have to do that one. It's definitely. So, okay, let's do this the long way. Kashan has some intuition, but he's not explaining it clearly. It's divided. So, 10% of a $24 meal of turns into multiply in a word problem. 24, well, that's just 24. How do we put 10% into a calculator? Calculators don't like percent. Point, uh, a 0 0.10. Zero. Yeah, we're going out of percent. So we'll go left twice. So 0 0.1. So if I do 0 0.1 times 24, then I get the $2.40 that he was saying. The shortcut, if you remember it, 10% is if you take the decimal point of the price and scoot it once. Oh, yeah, okay. you best call dividing, yeah. So that's not really dividing, it's a scoop. But it's a scoop, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. 
Okay, now we're doing 20% of a $30 meal. So 20%, again, we're going to use Ripple up to make it a decimal. So we'll go left twice. Okay, of becomes. <laughs> Multiply. <laughs> 30 is just 30. So what is 0. 0.2 times 30? 60. So six. Six. I was going to say six, not 60. Six. <laughs> Two times 30 is 60. If there's a 0. 0.2, so that's going to be six dollars. Yeah. yeah. Is, is coming into so play. GED likes this one because it's testing your rip lock that you can't put the percent in the calculator well. You have yeah, to turn it to a decimal first. Yeah, do decimal. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Art time. Drawing a right angle, a right triangle, a parallelogram with its height greater than its width, a triangle with an angle greater than 100. Remember for angles that 90 degrees is straight up. Whoops. You're backwards. You got it backwards. Yeah. yeah. OK. 90 degrees is straight up. So if you're more than 100, it's like the cro crocodile has opened his mouth very yeah. big. Yeah. And Who wants to be eaten by a crocodile, not me? So. I could help you with these, or you could just try them over the weekend because they're drawing, and then we'll talk about them on Tuesday. Yeah. You want to save these? Sure. Or am I? Oh, I'm okay. I'm going to make a note, share, so I know when I get home to do. That is too much drawing. I, I want to just do that now. <laughs> but I'll just sit here and sleep. Okay. Oh, we're missing a part A. Part A was probably what is the perimeter? Uh oh. I, I know what you're getting at. Hmm. Yeah. Work on this together. I want to add up all the edges. Some edges are hiding from me. Uh-oh. Which is an easy edge to find that isn't labeled yet. Well, I see the one on the 30 centimeters should be like uh, six centimeters. So Sean is saying this one he thinks is six. Why would that be six? Because you're mul you're multiplying five out of six is 30, 30 centimeters. Length times width is 30. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in his head, he said that I have 30 mm -hmm. and five. So I had to do 30 divided by five and that about six. So this one is six. That works. Okay. How about this edge? How big five. is that one? Five. Because that just matches the other side right here. Right. How about sure. this edge at the bottom? 11. Yes. How did Betty get 11? Uh, six and five plus five. Six and five, right? She went this far <laughs> and then she went this far extra. So there's extra. that missing piece there. Is, I think that's three centimeters, that missing piece. So this one is going to be three centimeters. Yep, yeah, because that's the missing piece. Okay, same as before. Yep. Something times 11 is 33. So if that was hard to do in your head, 33 divided by 11 is three. There. <laughs> and so this one here is also going to be three. three yeah. So now we're going to find, we're now we're going to find the perimeter. Now we can find the perimeter. So add them all up. Where do you want to start? We don't want to skip any. Like, like, you'll start from uh, clockwise. 
Okay. Is it okay if I start from this corner? Sure. That just seems kind of Very natural. So we have six. Then we have five and five and three and 11. That's about all I can keep track of. And you're telling me you made an arrow. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't like when I end up with a plus. Right? See? And then another three and another five. 38. And I get 38. And a perimeter, a distance is just plain centimeters. Yep. The area, that's really easy. Find those two big boxes. Over I there. have two boxes. One is 30 and one is 33. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is add 30 and 33. And 63. And so it's not any true that the area is the harder one. Square centimeters. Yes. And maybe you want me to write it as square <laughs> centimeters. I can certainly do that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how much the GED has this kind of area puzzle, shape puzzle, but it could. I wouldn't put it past it. Uh, it wasn't on the practice GED that I took, but it might be. Okay. Okay, so that's all I have for now. For next week, I can make another one of these and change numbers. Right. And more. if you want to do more, then there's the Math C readiness check by Open Math. Here we are. And I can do a teacher preview and see all the problems at once. But these sheets should look pretty similar to what we just did or sometimes be easier, because a few of these we did were kind of math C stuff, like this one that we were kind of doing. <coughs> Maybe you can do this yourself, but hopefully you could follow along when we did it, and that showed you that you're ready mm -hmm. for math C. Yeah, I did, I did, I did the one on the top. There are, I found out those. So we can do the, my open math thing in class together, or you can do it. I want to do it at two, over the weekend, two, two. or both. You could do it over the weekend and then show off that you. It's too answers. confusing to do it at home. I rather do it in class. Um, and but if you look at any? these, then if I, how do I go back? So if I try a problem then I can say, get a similar question. So just because you do one of them over the weekend, mm -hmm. then we can say together in class, let's all do a similar one. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not like we can't do both ways. So, okay. It's only 7.30, so what, it's still too early to go home. So what is there to do next? What is there to do next? Um, what I think I want to do is one other way to see how we're doing is go to, oops, this is ugly. Let's look, pretend I'm a student. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our textbook and log in. Oh, okay, so somewhere in this book, there should be like an end of the book test. Oh, there's only chapter tests and summaries. That's kind of sad. Well, let's pick one of our topics then. And do a look at the problems for that. So why don't we do Radios and propor proportion. Ratios and pro that's a math C one. We haven't really done much of that one. Okay. Percent or measurement or geometry or whole numbers. Um, do, 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 do geometry. So let's see what they think we should know about geometry. I'm going to say get rid of tools. So they're giving us a summary first. Here's the formulas we talked about. So far, so good. The circumference and radius and diameter, they do that. 
They give you some example problems to go with each formula. That's pretty nice. Oh, this see. book does three-dimensional shapes. So math B doesn't do that. So don't worry about these problems. Mm -hmm. So three-dimensional shapes have volume instead of area. So ignore the 3D stuff. Okay, so could you do these? Find the perimeter of all the different shapes. Some of them are plain things like a rectangle or triangle. Others are let's smash shapes together like we just did. Mm -hmm. You want to do one of these? I don't know. That's up to Betty and Sean. I'm just thinking. I... Here's a pretty interesting one with like a yeah, hump yeah. on that. Yeah, that sounds good on that one. We should try that. Let's try that. Math nine, uh, problem nine. So page four fifty seven, number nine. So I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna to also grab where it says page four fifty seven. So we know where we got this from. And we could always type four fifty seven up above to go back there. Okay, and what's the instructions? I should grab that one. Find the area. So we don't care about the perimeter this time. All we care about is the area. Find the area. And so where would I start on this one? How do I find the area? Well, we got a we got a half circle here, and this is for so long. Uh, I could draw a line that kind of breaks it into parts. Is yeah. that what you're saying? So we have a half circle. So five. So we five and four. It's nine out of fifteen. So the circle is six. Six. She spread six. So they're saying that the diameter of the circle is six. Yes. So this distance here. Six feet. We started with 15 all the way across, and we said, well, if there's five and four and something else, the something else has to be six. Yeah. Okay, great start. So we know the diameter is six all the way across. So six. And we got uh, uh we gotta do we're just gonna do that uh six times a pi. That formula was the one that is how far around the circle, the thing we call the circumference. Yeah, I'm trying so, to find the I'm trying to find the area. We just want the area. So yeah. that's so in this case the circumference one we don't care about. We just want the area. Yeah, pi times yeah, diameter. No, we need a radius times a radius. Right, a radius times a radius. So what's, yeah. what's the radius of this? Uh, three. 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 Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Half of six is three. Um, so the area of the whole circle would be pi times three times three, which is about pi times three times three, about 28.3. The seven will make the two round up. Yeah. So about 28.3. 28.3. And that's one measurement unit, it's feet, but it's area, so square. Feet. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole circle, and this circle isn't a whole circle. So we want half of that. 
So just half the circle and not the other half. So we just divided by two. two. I have a question. Yeah. Why do you have to multiply three by three instead of say six times three times pi? Because uh, it says pi times the radius times the radius again. That's what the r squared means. Okay. R squared okay. is times itself. So I need the radius times itself. Times itself. Okay. Okay. So what, were, what was our answer for that? So that part it was about fourteen point one square feet. Okay. There we go. Now we got that angle. So that's this. Part here. So the yellow. Yeah. So this part here is 14.1 square feet of area. And then now we do 15 times three. So Sean is saying that this times this will give me the area of the box. Yeah. That is 45, 45 square feet. Yeah. And then we had uh, 14 times um, 14.1. Oh, <laughs> Where? I turned my off. I don't know, I'm just being, being weird. Oh, okay, I think we did it right. I'm curious okay. how to check my answer. So let me see if I can figure out how. So in the supplement selective answers, which problem are we doing? I think that's nine. There was nine, nine, or 59.1. They rounded slightly different. Yeah, that was really close. Well. That was so close. that's how to get to the answers again. You go to the tools and then the supplement tab at the top, and then selective answers gives you the odd answers. But the yeah, answer is it was close. It was so <laughs> really close. Well, it's just how to round. So it's yeah. not long. It's just a different choice of how yeah. to ask school. So that's another thing you can do if you're not sure how to um how ready you are for Matt C, or if you want to do more review and get extra ready, or if you're not taking Matt C until the fall and you're worried you're rusty, then you can take the book and just look at the end of the chapter stuff. As long as the stuff we did, like ignore the three D stuff, <laughs> and say, "Yeah, I can do this." And if you have the ebook, then um, you can always, you know, watch the videos and go back and say, "Oh, not volume. We haven't done volume. Not surface area." There we go. You could say, okay, these look interesting. I want another one that's like that. Or I want another one that's like that. I think that's what's good about this book yeah. as it has the videos and the more practice. Yeah. Okay, so we did a geometry. Let's look at the end of the chapter for a different thing. So percent or measurement or decimals or whole numbers. Or decimals. decimals. Yes, okay. Well, End for, of the chapter for decimals. I want to see what it looks like on that one. See so it's mentioned. talking about place value tenths, hundredths, thousandths, tenths, thousandths, hundred thousandths, and how to round. And they're giving you examples and how to add and subtract and divide. Some of this we did more than others. Some of it is kind of massy stuff. Fractions to decimals, top divided by bottom. You don't have to do a long division. Use your calculator. Mm -hmm. Decimals to fractions, put it over a thousand. Put it, say its name. In this case, it's thousands. It's not always thousands. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, square roots, we didn't do. Skip that. Pythagorean theorem, that's math, so you skip that. So can you write things as words, talk about place value, do stuff on the calculator, change fractions to decimals, change decimals to fractions, some of these PEMDAS kind of things. Square roots, you can skip. We haven't gotten that far. Some of the word problems, you could do those word problems. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, not the Pythagorean theorem one. Yeah. So. But uh, should I do one of these? Or pick one. One trinomial looks like. So to write things as a decimal, remember the chart we had here to go from a fraction to a decimal. So from fraction to decimal, I just divide top divided by bottom. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is 23 divided by 25. 0.928. Oh, so it's that easy. Okay. It's not really worth me doing a lot of co copy and paste on top okay. anymore. Yeah, yeah. maybe just get by ourselves. Yeah. Okay, let's look at what's at the end of percent. So the meaning of percent, it means out of 100, you could write it as over 100, how to go from percent to decimals and decimals to percent. That's the rip lock. Again, this stuff here. Mm -hmm. Why don't I erase some of that so it looks nicer. Mm -hmm. Percent to fractions or fractions to percent. Again, that's on this diagram here of how to move around. They give you examples here. And then the word problems. A lot of this is math C, but the type A is what we did so far. Percent of a number. We did a bunch of those where it was. The percent, you use rip lock to go to the left to change it into a decimal. So you could put it in the calculator. Mm -hmm. of becomes times, and then what are you multiplying? The original number by the decimal you get from that percent. Oh. So type B and type C aren't really much different, but we're kind of saving that for math C. And then interest, that's math C. So ta-da, write, write percents as decimals, write decimals as percent, write percents as fractions, write fractions as percent and then percent of something. So the first 13 you could do. Right, cool. And then some of the word problems, 23 out of 25, that's what we just did. Wait, I that driver's was 20, test? 23 out of 25. Yeah, I don't know what driver's test has only 25 problems. Um, so some of these you can do, some of them you might not have seen before. Right, cool. It so this test, a student answered 23 quite correctly. Mm -hmm. So if that was true, 92% might be passing and then they get their driver's license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully looking at this helps you say, yeah, I'm ready for math C or, oh, I need to review whatever, percent to fraction. Because that one was the one I missed that day or something. Oh, okay. Are we done? Looks like Gavin disappeared. Yeah, Gavin disappeared, so it's just, it's just us. Except for Betty. 